Hello and welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. Michelle Houghton here and what you see in front of you is a sheet of shrink plastic. This is not a particular brand. It's something I picked up on Amazon by just typing in shrink plastic. Um, it's truly just a clear plastic. I have stamped on it with stays on ink which and used um, the Tim Holtz butterfly from one of his sets. Now, if you know this or have worked with Copics before, you know that stays on ink is a big no-no with your Copics, but I needed it to stick to the plastic. So the trick is remembering which side you color on, and then when you start coloring with your Copics, which here I am going, I'm using an YR09 to start, um, I'm working on the opposite side of the, from the stamp. So I stamped on the one side, flipped it over, and now I'm coloring on the opposite side. Here is a y, um, Y38 coming in. Now the, if you've never worked on a really slick surface before, and obviously the shrink plastic is the extreme of that, you're not gonna get the same bright colors. It's gonna be quite a bit lighter. YR09 again. So I am working with fairly intense bright colors, but even with that, it's a little bit faded. And then here's an R39. You're gonna see this a little bit. You don't, it's not gonna blend. Um, they run up against each other and they will kind of blend into each other, but it does not look the same. It's not gonna be a smooth blend like you would get on your smooth white cardstock. So you can't go looking for that. Um, I'm using, the butterfly, first of all, because that's something that Sean did. She is a young woman that I met when in Japan at the Copic 30th anniversary. Y06 is what I've got for those yellows. And this is a technique she used and won the crafting award for. She did an entire box of butterflies. And I love the fact that this um, gives me those compartments to put those colors in. Um, I used a little E97 on the body just to darken it up a little bit. And now I'm going through and cutting with some sharp, small scissors, kind of fussing cutting around that edge. Remember, it's gonna shrink considerably, so the cutting doesn't need to be super exact. I am not going to try to cut out the antennae. Um, I'm just gonna cut those off. If I wanna come back and add those to my little butterfly later, I can, but I'm certainly not gonna do that right now. Um, Sean does some beautiful work with her. She actually adds a second layer onto the body to give the body more dimension. You're going to see though how big this is. It's a little bit shy of my hand size wise. And then I just use a heat gun. You could probably use a hair dryer on high. If I use a heat gun, it would probably be smart to have, um, if you're going to do a lot of manipulation, there's some things I learned right away. What's fun about this is you can see it literally happen just like when you were a kid and looking in the oven and things start to like shrink and curl. It does the same thing. It curls up and kind of balls up. And then as it's still heating, it literally flattens itself back out. You don't need to worry about that part. So you can just kind of keep blowing on it. It's going to kind of reopen and flatten out. Now the trick is, do you want it to have any shape? And this is the part that I learned my lesson on. I didn't really have anything with me. And those things are hot at this point. It's hot plastic so it's very very hot to the touch what you want to have is probably like some needle nose pliers you can use the tools like that you've done um, some of the paperwork with um, that you ball kind of the rollers that you kind of curl the paper with that would be really really effective i grabbed some scissors and anything i have available i even grabbed a spoon at one point just to try some things but the problem is it, it cools very quickly. So if you really are thinking about trying to bend some of that plastic, you need to do it while it's warm. So you need to be ready to kind of hold on to it and manage it. So I even thought um, we have in our house like a cutting glove that we use for cutting, even something like that that would still have the fingers in it might protect my hand a little bit from the heat. If I remember right, Sean uses even just cotton gloves. Um, so that you have a little bit of a heat barrier when you want to work with that plastic. So I'm going to play with this a little more. And obviously this was my first attempt. So I did a lot of back and forth and playing, but I wanted the wings to curl up just a little bit. Um, and I played around with it so that it would do that. And then I decided um, once I got this one kind of figured out that I would try to 
do a second one. And what happened was that little body got all crooked while I was fiddling around with the wings. So I was trying to straighten it back out. So managed to get that done. Um, Sean does some beautiful, beautiful work with necklaces, with jewelry. What I like about this and what you can see on just even these simple butterflies that I'm doing is that the color re-intensifies because as it shrinks down, compresses the, that ink together and so it ends up those brighter, more vivid colors. I did end up, when I heated it up, um, it had, I, it, I had flipped it over and so you do end up, I ended up with some Copic ink on my paper. So I decided to punch a hole and of course I didn't have my hole puncher with me. I was traveling when I did this particular video. So I just kind of stabbed a hole in one wing to see if I could get maybe something that I could put on a string or a chain. I wasn't sure how big I needed it to be, but that's kind of about a standard hole punch size. So then I'm trying to figure out what side I've stamped on and that's what I'm doing there. I'm brushing the plastic to see if I can feel the ink. So I've made my best guess and I'm starting with a BG45. Now you can see this is a mid-range color, it ends in a five, so it should be kind of in the middle of the road. And when I color on this plastic, it is super light. So again, you're just not gonna get the same look that you're used to. BB17 is next, much more intense color. So you're gonna have a little bit better luck with some of those darker colors, but also remember that when whatever you're making, a flower, a butterfly, when it shrinks back down, Here's a BB11, and you can kind of see how it's fading out a little bit, but I'm scribbling off on the side because it actually picks up. This is a BG18, again, super light, even though it should be a darker color, but it picks up. Here's a BG78, getting a little more color there. Um, but when you use a lighter marker, it actually picks up those darker colors. So I scribble some of that off to the side so it doesn't get um, kind of inundated or pulled into my marker. So that's that BG78 darkening up some of those areas. And then a V99 for the body on this one. Now when that shrinks down, you can hardly even see that color. But I just, you know, I'm playing. So I'm adding some color going through and going to cut this guy out at supersonic speed so you don't have to watch me cut out another butterfly. But you guys get the idea. For this process, you're going to want bigger stamps because obviously it shrinks so much. I mean, again, look at the size it's starting at in comparison to my hand and what I'm going to end up with. So really be considering um, before you start this what you're actually stamping with and trying. Um, I just would encourage you to try with some bigger stamps first, even if they're more open and have more to color. That's great. Um, this was just one I had that's a little bit bigger and I knew would be fun to experiment with. So heating this guy up again, I slowed it back down so you guys can see this part because this is the coolest part to me. It's fun to watch it shrink up and, and curl up. So it tightens itself up all in a little tiny ball and obviously it's trying to blow away. Kept it on the table here with as little touch as I can and then it's going to just reopen back up which I love it just kind of blooms back open and flattens itself out so that part I really don't have to do anything it does it on its own and then depending on if you want to curve it or leave it flat you can kind of mess with it while it's warm and that's the part like right now it's super super flexible so I gave this guy just a tiny hint of curve, but I didn't want to do as much just because I'd left that hole in the wing to see, maybe do a little bit of a necklace or something. So I kept it pretty flat. It has a real gentle curve to it. You can see them all finished up and I'm going to, in a second here, I'll lay down one of the originals so you guys can really see the size comparison of what that looks like. Thank you so much for joining me this week on Copic in the Craft Room. If you haven't had a chance, go ahead and like the channel so you can get this in your inbox every week. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I am always listening. Thank you so much. Have a happy, colorful week.